Good morning everybody, just on my way into work. The other day I was on my lovely Yamaha GTS 1000. I try to give my classic bikes a ride as often as I can. And I went into Derbyshire and I was using three cameras to film. The one that I'm on now, a GoPro on my chin piece and a 360 camera. Now the 360 camera seems to have a bit of a funny fisheye effect lens so a couple of times it looks like I'm out of position but then it scans or jumps over to the GoPro picture and it shows that I'm in the correct position. It's not that important it's just letting you know some of the reasons why I am where I am. If you're learning to ride to pass your test then don't worry too much about being in position three for left hand bends uh, just ask your instructor about that. Also, you'll see my right hand do this a few times. It looks like I'm reaching for my front brake lever, but these gloves are quite tight and I was just stretching out my hand a little bit. Liana, my young lady who also works with me, is an advanced instructor and she's just launched her own YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description below, so have a look. And also this upload, I've time coded it. So feel free to have a look. See what you think, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. So this is the first section, which is a limited speed limit, and there are loads of manhole covers around. So this is where safety takes precedence over position. Also, if you bear in mind the low speed that I'm doing at the moment, it doesn't always warrant being in such an extreme position. So I'm just going to take the line inside these manhole covers. Because the general rule is that you should be able to stop in the distance you can see to be clear on your side of the road. And on something like a single track road, you need to be able to stop in half that distance to allow for any oncoming vehicles. So I'm doing 40 miles an hour, I'm in about third gear. I don't have a gear position indicator on this because these old bikes didn't have them. Lifting my head and looking around the bend. So there's a sharp left-hander coming up here and I can see some dips in the road where the manhole covers are. So I'm just going to bring the position into two and it was a good job as well because there's an oncoming vehicle. Right hand bend, position myself over to one for it. Still holding myself in the gear that I'm in and you can see the roads opening up now so I can select a higher gear. Left hand are coming up and it looks like it's opening up a little bit but the speed limit hasn't changed yet so I need to keep my speed down. Here comes a 50. Checking my mirrors and off we go. Cyclist and no oncoming vehicles. I can select another gear. Which gear you select entirely depends on the type of bike you're riding too. This one's a 1000cc four cylinder. We've got some pedestrians here, just going to bring my speed down and I'm probably going to select another gear as well. Okay, it's a 1000cc four cylinder so it's an incredibly torquey engine. So I can select a higher gear a little earlier on this one because it still keeps me in a responsive gear. So left-hander coming up, I'm staying in three for all these left-handers until I see it change, like now. And now I'm over to one, over to three for the left-hander. Bring my speed down because my limit points now holding, holding, opening. Remember to have a look at my other uploads on limit points. So these chevrons, they often put chevrons on bends because there's usually been an accident here or several accidents. So there we go, driving out of the corner, over to three. I don't need to change a gear, firstly because I'm already at the speed I need to do. I am watching for any oncoming for these uh, pedestrians. And secondly because I'm going uphill. So I'm doing 50 miles an hour, there's a right hand bend coming up. So checking my mirrors. It's nice and early, it's a Sunday morning and I'm just nipping out for a coffee. So the sign's telling me that the road's doing all kinds of things. So I'll bring my speed down to increase my view. Oncoming, position two. 
and now I may as well because of the low speed involved staying to and as it happens that was a good thing because there's some oncoming vehicles straight line this bit because the next bend is a right hander Another right hander coming up. You notice at no point have I touched my brakes. I'm just using my gears or the gear that I'm in. And it's what we call acceleration sense. And that's the ability of the rider to alter the speed of his machine with accurate use of the throttle. And it really is a millimetre at a time here. So out for a view. Staying out because there's another left hander coming up speed still at 50 right hander position myself nice and early into one left hander coming up over to three lift my head right hander coming up as soon as I saw the uninterrupted tarmac because the wall was in the way I then got over there's no point moving over too early if there's a wall in the way because there could be something like an oil spillage or an animal on the road below the uh, height of the wall that you won't see so make sure you can see the road before you change your position. Here we go for a left hander coming up. Lift my head, right hander. Looking around the bend, speed still good. Holding this steady throttle. So even if you've forgotten what gear you're in, if you look at my rev counter you can see it's only at just under 4,000 revs which is in a nice responsive range so I don't necessarily need to change up yet but now we're coming to a national which is a 60 so check my mirrors off we go bring it up and I'm going to change up again now because I've gone a little bit quicker So there's a right hander coming up, but there's a small area where I can't see the tarmac. Now I can, so I can position myself over. Sorry if I put my hand in the way there, that probably blocked your view. When you're going round a bend like this, you need to probably ever so slightly open your throttle to maintain the speed that you're doing because of the drag that's caused when you're backed over round the bend. Keeping out for the view and if I see something I'm going to move right hander coming up. Over to one, bring my speed down, do I need to select another gear? Yes, just going to go down one gear. And then roll out for a left hander, keeping the gear that I'm currently in. I'm probably in about fourth on this bike and there are only five gears. Steady throttle, roll out up to 60, select another gear. So I am now in fifth gear. So over to three for the left-hander. I hope you can hear me all right, it's really windy with this low screen. Speed's at 60. Lifting my head and trying to get as far of you as I can. And looking for the last bend and it incorporates these cars. So I've just killed two birds with one stone there. Moving over to one for the right-hander and moving away from the oncoming. Okay, looking over the hedge now. But do remember, looking over the hedge and the wall only lets you see things that are over the hedge and the wall. There still could have been a sheep, or as we say, a Caterham 7 coming the other way, on the wrong side of the road. Can't see anything yet. Right-hander. So now, it says in the Roadcraft Manual that your positioning should be if you're going to be maintaining or gaining a view. And you shouldn't necessarily need to change your position due to either the slow speed involved or the open nature of the bend. And on that occasion, I could quite easily see, and I could stop in the distance I could see on my side of the road. So there was no point doing any extreme positioning. But of course, if you wanted to, there's no harm in it. This is one of my favorite left-hand bends because here I can see the road and I can apex a little bit here as well. I do like that left hander. Okay, I 
come out towards position three here because you can see that the brow of this hill isn't very steep and you do get quite an early warning of the roof of a car or a motorcycle helmet. Speed's at 60, you've got a crossroads coming up. Keeping myself equidistant, I can see over the walls, but remember not the tarmac. Over to one for the right-hander, still nobody behind me. Bring the speed down a little bit because I'm losing my view. There it is. The car in front of me is braking. Now it could be braking for a reason or it could be what we call comfort braking. So, checking my mirrors. The gear I'm in is affording me a really nice amount of engine braking and I don't need to change gear. And you can see here where the white lines are worn. And that would indicate that a lot of vehicles have crossed those lines by apexing the bend or cutting the corner. So you do need to bear that in mind when you're going round the bend. So it could be something large coming the other way. So I'm coming up to a car that I may need to be overtaking at some point. So I'm just going to straight line here, apex and over into position one ready for the right hander. And if I'm looking at doing an overtake, the gear that I'm in is responsive, but not necessarily for an overtake. So now I'm closing in, I can see over the wall there's an oncoming car. So down comes my speed in the gear I'm in, and I'm going to select two gears down. So I am now in third gear, a little close to the car, so I'm just hanging back a little bit for a view. And I can't overtake here because there's a blind dip, and there could have been something in that dip. So I'm just hanging back a little bit, he's doing 40 and a 60, there's a car on the left, maple out on me. So I'm now two second distance behind the car, oncoming wide road so it's not a problem. Left hand bend coming up, checking my mirrors, we're all good. I'm going to lift my head, he's braking you see, comfort braking again. So now I'm going to start closing in a little bit because he's going slow around the bend. Is there an overtake on? No. Because there was a dip and there's a solid white line on my side of the road. Move into position one to get a view on the inside of him. Over to three. Now he's brought his speed up to 52. There's no point me overtaking because it's a 60 limit and do remember if I'm riding legally there is really no overtake on here. If I was another rider and was breaking the speed limit I would have taken the overtake then. Disclaimer, Rowcraft Nottingham doesn't break speed limits. <coughs> okay down one gear for the bend. At no point throughout that whole ride have I changed down a gear in order to brake. My braking has always been initially in the gear that I'm in by throttle control and now brakes one gear, two gears and that's it, we're done. That's the end of the lovely Viagelia. Hope you enjoyed this, remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye bye. Camera's off. I can go now. <laughs>